blockchain wasn't just built out of nowhere, but it was built on top of existing technology. And as a developer, this is really important to understand this. So in this video, I'm going to explain you the tech stack that the blockchain was built on and how all these things, all these components interact with each other. Hey, I'm Julian and on my channel, Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain and how to become a blockchain developer. So for my explanation, we're gonna focus on Ethereum, which is the most popular blockchain. And we're gonna start with the server because blockchain run on the server. So at the beginning, the basic layer is the hardware layer. So you have the CPU, the memory, the, the hard drive, everything. On top of this layer, you have the operating system. So most end users use Windows, but actually for servers, the most popular operating system is Linux. And specifically, this is a, a, a specific flavor of Linux, such as Ubuntu, CentOS, etc. On top of this layer is the application layer, and that's where we will find the blockchain software. So in the case of Ethereum, we have implementation in different programming languages, such as C++, Go, Rust, but the most popular one has the implementation in, in Go, um, which is called Geth, and the implementation in Rust is called Parity. And so this implementation in their code what they're going to do is they're going to interact with the API of the operating system and in turn the operating system is going to manipulate the hardware on behalf of the blockchain. So the blockchain has different subcomponents. The first one is storage and that's where you will actually store the data of the, of the blockchain on the hard drive of your server. So for the Ethereum implementation, they use some embedded database and I think the one they use is called LevelDB and the difference with other databases such as MySQL is that for this embedded database, the code of the database is inside the, your own code. So this is not a separate code base. These usually are less powerful than databases like MySQL, but the advantage is that it's easier to deploy a software with an embedded database. Another component of blockchain is called the consensus component. So this component is very important because its job is to make sure that the blockchain is up to date with the rest of the network. And the last component of Ethereum is the Ethereum virtual machine or just EVM. So that's the part of Ethereum that actually runs the smart contract. Smart contracts are written in Solidity and many people wrongly assume that the Ethereum virtual machine actually understand Solidity code, but that's not the case because Solidity code is compiled into what we call bytecode and bytecode is a series of elementary instructions called opcode and these opcode are the thing that the EVM can actually understand, but the EVM is absolutely unable to understand Solidity. So how all these parts interact with each other? So the Ethereum network is composed of different nodes. A node is basically a server that runs the Ethereum software. So let's say that we have two nodes. When you start your node, it will want to synchronize with the rest of the network. So the code of the consensus layer will connect to another node and the way it's going to do this is by using an API of the operating system because the part that allow to connect to other computer is inside the operating system. We call this the network layer. So the code of the consensus of the blockchain is going to call this API in the operating system. Then the operating system of the first node is going to connect to the network layer of another node, in, so in the operating system of another server. And then the, the code of, of this operating system is going to call the code of the blockchain and say, hey, this guy here is trying to make a connection. Then the consensus layer is going to see the message of the first node and say, oh, okay, so you want to have some information about the state of the blockchain. So then this blockchain is going to send back to the first blockchain all the block of the blockchain. So the way these blocks are going from the node two to node one is exactly the same that I explained before. So it will go down in the network layer of the operating system of the node 2 then connect to the operating, operating system of node 1 and finally come back to the consensus layer of node 1. And then the, the consensus layer of node 1 is going to save these blocks, make them persistent by passing them to the storage component that will store them on the hard drive of the computer. 
So what I've explained you here mostly concern developers and miners because they are the ones who run the blockchain software. But how about end users who just want to interact with the blockchain but don't want to run an Ethereum node because this is too technical? Well, these end users have a laptop, so they have this hardware layer, then they also have an operating system. And on top of it, there is the application layer. Most users, the way they interact with the blockchain is by using web browser. And web browser are able to run JavaScript because they embed a JavaScript virtual machine. So end user is going to visit the web page of a specific decentralized application. So it's going to load the HTML and it's also going to load some JavaScript code. And this is this JavaScript code that will allow us to connect to the blockchain. So let's say that a user wants to do some transaction. So it's going to click on a button. Then this click is going to be captured by some JavaScript code, which will build a transaction. So transaction describe which modification you want to do on the blockchain. And once the transaction has been built and confirmed by the user, then the JavaScript code will want to send this transaction to the network to connect to a specific Ethereum node. So the way it's going to happen is that the JavaScript code is connected to the code of the web browser, which is usually in C and C++. And this code in C++ itself, it makes use of the API of the operating system. So it's going to call the API of the operating system to make a network request then the operating system of the user is going to connect to the operating system of the server where the Ethereum node runs. Then this message is gonna be passed to the consensus layer of the Ethereum node. Then Ethereum is going to make sure that the transaction is valid. Then if that's the case, it's going to fetch the latest block from the storage component. Then it's going to pass this to the Ethereum virtual machine. The Ethereum virtual machine is going to run the code of the smart contract with the data from the transaction. So it's going to potentially modify the state of the blockchain. And after the Ethereum virtual machine has finished to work, the data changes will be persisted in the storage component of the blockchain. So I really love to dig into how blockchain works. And if you want to see other videos on this topic, check out this playlist.